Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, once again, it's Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. Today I'm going to be going over my top five bass fishing lures. In no particular order, uh, we're going to do the chatterbait. This, uh, this bait uh, I use a lot on my online tournaments because um, it's a big bass bait. Okay, it'll, it'll get those five and six pounders to, to crunch down on it. And I also do very well during tournaments if the conditions uh, allow for it, put it that way. I've also won a couple of tournaments, and it's also been a major player in uh, for this year. I've even developed like two different setups for it. So if you guys want to know more about the Chatterbait, I'll have the video maybe up here somewhere. So you can go, you know, so you can go watch the uh, full review on it. But the chatterbait, the chatterbait to me, uh, it does two things. It's like a crankbait for the grass, and it can cause reaction bites too. So it's been a major player. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, it's put me in the winner circle, you can say, or it put me in contention many times. And this is just one of those lures where I throw in the morning, and ma 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 majority of the time it's going to be in the morning. Yeah. Okay, but it, it puts out big fish. <laughs> Okay, number two, number two, number two, uh, is the Senko. Or well, this one's actually a Bass Pro Senko. Uh, it's a sticko worm is what they call it. But the way I have it rigged is a little bit different. Uh, this is more about the rig on the Senko. Because if you guys notice, uh, it's got a gaping giant hook on there. And the O-rings, I got two of them on there. Color on the O-rings, I don't think matters much. But I have the O-rings on like an X pattern. And then you hook through the X. So what that does is it keeps the uh, worm and the hook, you know, 90 degrees from each other. And it just increases the hookup ratio big time. And to even increase it even more than that, almost a 100% ratio, is you put a gaping hook on it. This is a VMC Nico hook. You can get them locally, but it's the size, which is hard to get. The size is a 2 hot. It's the biggest one they offered it. Why so big? Well, we're gonna be catching big fish with this. This is uh, this is the rig I go to during the spring. Um, during the spring, if big females on bed, you want you want something beefy. I throw this on a baitcaster with thirty pound braid and a twenty pound fluorocarbon leader. So that's what I've been throwing it all year on, and bass don't care. So they don't care. I don't care. I'll throw something big, you know. But uh, it's been showcased a couple times in tournaments. Um, the Watumpka tournament where I caught one in the slop. Hit a frog, missed it, fired back out there with a, a Senko. That same exact Senko set up. And he smokes it, but it's about 20 yards out through slop. I was able to, you know, horse him through on that. So that's a big deal. Big gear on the Senko. Uh, next and foremost, uh, I think you guys hear me talk about this guy a lot. This is the little Kitech 2.8. Uh... Pick your poison in terms of colors. Uh, I tend to stick with the shad patterns. And on rare occasions, I would throw a bluegill uh, color. The bluegill color is called electric chicken. No, electric bluegill. It's like a real, real bright orange. And it, it works real well, too. But the jig head, the jig head is from Buckeye. And it's got a little screw lock here on the shank of the hook. So you can just twist it on. So you don't have to super glue it. And it holds it on real, real good. And it's just perfect. I love it. Throw it all the time. The way I fish it is basically I chuck it out there. And um, I let it sink to the bottom. Hop it twice. If I don't get a bite, I just low roll it back. And then fire it out again. And it's a real, real simple uh, real, real simple bait. So for a beginner bait, it's actually pretty good. But it's a little on the expensive side. Right? But that's my swim bait. And it's great for uh, uh, hard conditions. It's good for uh, high pressure situations. And you fish it fast, cover a lot of water with that. And if if I can't get them to bite on the little two eight, and I'm forced to fish a Ned rig, I never fish Ned rigs. If I'm forced to fish Ned rigs, this is a Ned rig that I do. Okay, so this is an owner uh, jig head or Ned head. It's still a mushroom head, but I like the hook. So just pay attention to that. The hook looks really good. All right, the hook is pretty stout because I throw it on a bait caster. 
Uh, I've been able to put on some pretty, pretty good sized fish with this. You know, big small mouth and stuff like that. And when the color of the, the body itself, you could, you could throw the Z-Man. So I'll have the Z-Man there. And just, I just throw straight black. But this is actually a, uh, uh, a locally poured uh, body. And the guy's the name is uh, John. He's from Cast Lowers. And I'll, he has a Facebook group, a Facebook page. I'll, I'll show the links down there. You can you know, request from him, buy from him, buy locally. And just tell him straight black. You know, that's what I throw. Straight black. Straight black works for all. It's my preferred color, and it's one of the only colors I throw. Okay, so that's the net. Uh, the way I fish the net is I bomb it out there. Um, long cast is key. Bomb it out there, hop it twice. If they ain't got it by then, Hop another two times, bring it in, throw it in, throw it back out. I don't even on the real end. I don't even slow wine. I just burn it back in. I flip it back out there. I've been able to go behind a lot of people and catch fish with with that setup right there. Okay, and then here's my last one. This is the one that I carry all the time. It's a jig, right? But I don't hardly ever have it tied on. Uh, I don't have it tied on until I notice that it is time for the knockout punch, right? So. I'm not a jig person, I'll be honest. I'm not a jig person. I don't throw the jigs all the time. I prefer the Texas rig plastics over a jig. Uh, the only time I throw this jig is when, um, I, like I said, I realize I'm either behind. Well, typically if I'm behind, I'm not going to throw the jig. It's when I know I'm in contention to win and I'll throw the jig. Or if I pull up to an area that it's just like, it just looks so good. There's got to be, there's got to be, be a, you know, a big bass in the rocks or something. I'll throw the jig. So I've been working on the jig, my jig game. I've been working on it. It's my weakness. I've been working on it for a while. And for, for me, when you, when you say jigs, it's not brush pile fishing. It's not skipping docks. It's not that type of that type of stuff. For me, throwing a jig is there's offshore structure, you know, rocks primarily, or shell beds. And you know, you got to throw something out there. That's where my jig comes in. Uh, this jig is a missile baits headbanger. I like the head design on it. It's got a weirdly, uh, it's like a diamond shaped head, um, designed by Mike Iaconelli, and it's got a medium wire, okay, it's not a gaping big wire, it's a medium wire, and you need that when you bomb these things so far out, you know, on fluorocarbon, even on 20 pound fluorocarbon, when you're so far out there, you don't always get a good hook set, or a good hook penetration, so you need a, a more uh, medium wire hook and that's right that's that's, just, that's me too since i'm not a jake person i can say that my hook sets are not that good okay the power behind is not that good so i need a medium wire hook to deliver the blow and bring it home the jig itself is actually uh it's actually a fairly new jig uh jig trailer uh, i don't think a lot of people even carry it in stores so this is the pack of slim the four inch with the pinterest dyed blue it comes dyed blue, which is something I like. I really like it. I don't know why other companies don't do it more, but the kudos and thumbs ups and everything likes to, to pack a for that. So it comes dyed blue, red, or black. I think you could get them pre dyed. That's that's excellent. I always buy them pre dyed. But anyways, where do I fish the jig? So the jig to me, um, I'll give you a story, and then that, hopefully that illustrates uh, when you need to throw a jig. Okay, so. The jig, I think everybody knows that I, I, I came in second place at the BBKC with it, with this exact same jig, same setup, half ounce. Uh, I throw the jig when I absolutely have to. You know, I don't usually just go out and start chucking the jig. I'll throw a crankbait, you know, 10 times <laughs> in front of a jig. I'll throw everything else in front of the jig. But I do understand the jig will put out big fish if it gets bit. So... BBKC uh, 2019, up until about maybe 11 something, 11.30, I was throwing my traditional stuff, all the stuff I just mentioned. That got me to about 78 inches, but there's like a million people stacked at 78. You have to do something different to, to get in front of those guys. So when I uploaded my fish and I checked the leaderboard, I knew I was behind. I was in the top 15, but... It was only a matter of seconds between you and... It was a matter of, like, inches. Not even inches. Quarter inches between you. Tiebreakers. Uh, as, as how you get between... Nah, anyways. I looked at the leaderboard. And I saw my buddy, Mike. And I knew he was throwing a jig, too. And he was doing very well. He was already at 85 inches. So I figured, alright. We have this jig. 
We need to start using it. So, scrap the game plan. Get your biggest, beefiest rod out. Put the jig on it. Well, at the time, I already had a finesse jig tied on. But, cut the finesse jig off. Put the full-size jig on. And go to town. You need to get something going. Some big, bass bite going. So, anyways, I, I, I started doing things I'm not supposed to do. Uh, start fishing offshore, islands type stuff, and it gets to this one spot, wind's blowing on it, it's weird how it worked that day, it'll probably never happen again, but there's wind blowing, it's a crosswind, there's mud coming off of the island, wind's blowing like 25 miles an hour, and I throw my little Kitek out there, I get smoked first cast, it's like a 15 incher, but the thing is, there was like two or three fish that bit it, because I remember it bit once, twice, and then the third one got it. So I had three bites on one cast. So I knew it was a decent population. It was like a 15 incher. So I figured, all right, put that down. You know, fire the jig out there. I found the jig out there. I started catching them. In the next hour, I would call out four of my five fish. Those four would bring me all the way up to, I think it was 87 inches, which was good enough for second place. And that was all done on the jig. Okay. So that's, that's where my my jigging comes in and the other thing is if you are in contention to win and you need a big bite and you can find some areas where you can say okay i just need one more bite and i got this you know jig jig plays that role all right guys so anyways that's my top five for 2019 hopefully that uh that helps you guys uh, i know this this year i've been more of a finesse i'm trying to build more finesse into my uh my 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 lineup uh, before this year, it was all power fishing, you know, and I did well with that too. But you know, there's some this year. I try. I started out power fishing, and I just kind of knew it wasn't going to be a power fishing year, so I forced myself to adapt to finesse the finesse game. And guess what? Guess who wins the angle of the year? My brother. My brother Paul wins it, doing mostly finesse, mostly. So his game is strong in finesse. Uh, much much stronger game in finesse than I am. And he's won three angler years. He's the only one to win three angler years for our circuit, and he's only the one to win it back to back. So he's just he's just that good. But he throws a lot of shaky heads. He throws a lot of you know finesse stuff, Ned rigs, a lot of dragon worms type stuff, a lot of swim baits. He doesn't throw chatter baits. He doesn't throw full size jigs <laughs> that type stuff. So, so that's me. And he doesn't throw crank baits. So that's that's so that's me and that's him. We do two totally totally different things. And you'll see when he releases his videos how different his top fives are gonna be from mine. Okay. So so if you like this video, if it helped you out, if he even you know if we helped you out a little bit, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and maybe even share the video. And so, with that being said, that's the end of the video. I will see you on the next one. And good hunting, good fishing, tight lines. See you on the next one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you guys on the next one.